Here we're going to look at a fairly quick but interesting geometry problem. So we want to suppose that the line segment AB is a diameter of a circle of radius R. And then our goal is to find the average length of a chord that is perpendicular to this line segment AB. So I've already drawn a circle here just so that we can make a nice picture. So let's go ahead and put this diameter AB on the circle. So I'll put my point A here and then I'll put my point B here. And then let's go ahead and call this point in the middle O for the origin. Okay. So now let's look at what a chord that is perpendicular to AB would look like. So it would look something like this. So the important thing is that we get a right angle right here. And so the fact that we get a right angle right there should make you think about some trigonometric things. And in fact, maybe we can calculate the length of that chord with trigonometry. So I'm going to go ahead and break this chord into two pieces. So I think it's a pretty common... Uh, commonly known fact from geometry that this diameter will definitely bisect um, this chord. So I can go ahead and say that this uh, length from the diameter up to the circle is y and then this length down here will also be y. And so the length of our chord will be 2y. So all we have to do is figure out what this y is. Now the next thing that I want to do is draw a radius from O to this intersection point of the chord and the circle. So that's going to give us something like that. But again, since we know that goes from the center of the circle up to the circle, we know what the length of this is and it will be R. In other words, the radius of the circle. And now the next thing that we can do is maybe label this angle right here, theta. And and then we want to notice that all such chords will be parametrized by this theta as theta runs from zero, which would be kind of like the chord of length zero over here, up to theta equals pi, in other words, 180 degrees, which would be the chord of length zero going through the point A, in other words, this tangent line right here. So if we can somehow find the average value of that function, we'll be good to go. So now let's go ahead and write the length of this chord in terms of theta. So what we can notice is by trigonometry, we have sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be y over r. So in other words, we have y, which is the unknown bit, equals r times sine theta. So the length of our chord is given by, maybe we'll, solve, we'll call it L theta, and that's going to be two times Y or two times R times sine theta. And then, just like we said before, we wanna notice that all such chords can be described as theta runs from 0 to pi. You know, and you may not want to include the 0 in there, and you may not want to include the pi in there because those aren't really chords, but those are just like single points with respect to a whole interval of real numbers, and so those don't really count so much. Okay, fantastic. Now, we want, now what we want to do is use a classic result from Calculus 2, and that is the average value of a function. So here we'll have the average of the length of theta on the interval 0 to pi. So that's going to be equal to 1 over the length of that interval. In other words, it'll be 1 over pi. And now we have the integral from 0 to pi of L theta, but L theta is given by this 2R sine theta d theta. But now maybe we can like take some constants out of that. That's going to give us 2R over pi, and then the integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta. We can go ahead and take the antiderivative of that. That's going to give us 2R pi, and then the antiderivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So we have minus cosine theta. I should have said minus cosine theta. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi. Now what I would like to do is change the order of evaluation and change this from a minus to a plus. So I'll put a pi down here and I'll put a zero up here. 
and then we know that cosine of zero is one and cosine of pi is negative one. So we have one minus negative one. In other words, we'll have two, but that's multiplied by this. So in the end, we get four times r over pi. So we've answered our question. The average length of a chord perpendicular to AB is four times the radius divided by pi. And that's a good place to stop.